Section 11.5 is called Lines and Planes in Space, and we're going to start with the lines component of it. Um, lines in space, as with lines in a plane, we can specify a line by identifying two points on the line. That's, that's what we usually do um, in two dimensions. Or sometimes we'll do it this other way where we identify one point on the line in the slope. So in th three dimensions, this sort of identifies with identifying one point on the line in a direction of the line, which is what we call a slope in two dimensions. We have two ways to represent the equations of a line in space parametric and symmetric. So the parametric representation you'll see there has three separate equations in respect to x, one with respect to y, and one with respect to z. And the symmetric representation you can get straight from the parametric representation by simply solving each of those for t and setting them all equal to each other. So we're going to do an example. We have a um, line through the points 0, 2, 1, and 2, 2 0, 2 and we're going to find both the parametric and the symmetric equations of the line. The first thing we need to know is the direction, because that's, that's the component that's not directly given to us. But the direction has to do with the vector. So we're going to create the vector using these points, and just so that we have a reference to be able to call them, I'll call them P and Q. So the direction it will take the Q components and subtract the P. Um, that's just the order I chose, so you could choose either way. So this would be 2, and then it would be negative 2, and then it would be 1. That would be the direction of our line. So this is the components a1, a2, and a3 back in that definition over here. See where you see a1, a2, and a3. That's my direction vector. <coughs> so my symmetric, or sorry, my parametric equations then. And we'll just use the first point. You can use either point, but we're going to pick the first one. We would do x minus 0 equals the first value, which is 2t, and then y minus 2 equals negative 2t, and then z minus 1 equals 1t, or we can just write t. So this is the, some, these parametric equations, and then for the symmetric equations we can do the same thing, basically we're going to take x minus 0, or x, over 2, the y minus 2 over the negative 2, and then the z, z minus 1 over 1. And this would be our symmetric equation for the line. A definition here, if we have two lines L1 and L2 in R3, so three dimensions, with parallel vectors A and B, and the theta is the angle between them, we have a couple things that can happen. The lines could be parallel, and they'll be parallel when the vectors are parallel or the lines could intersect, and if they intersect and the angle between, then the angle between them is theta. The L, um, lines L1 and L2 are orthogonal whenever A and B are orthogonal, so that looks very much like number one where it says they're parallel when the other ones are parallel. So we're going to do an example. Uh, and in this example, they, they, there's a piece of the direction that I haven't actually defined yet. It says, determine whether the lines are parallel, skew, or intersect. So I need to talk about what skew means. Now, skew is not something that can happen in two dimensions. In a plane, lines are either parallel or they intersect. There are no other options. However, in three dimensions, lines can, in fact, not intersect and not be parallel. So imagine, if you will, um, the corner of a room. If you look at the, the line where the ceiling meets one of your walls on, on the ceiling, and then if you look at the floor where the other wall in the room that's not parallel to the wall you looked at originally meets the floor, you're going to get another line. Um, and the lines won't intersect because one's along the ceiling, one's on the floor. But neither are they parallel. They're not on the same wall. So those are lines that would be called skew. They don't intersect and they're not, and they're not parallel. All right, so we're going to take a look at this particular um, question. We've got uh, two different lines um, defined parametrically, and um, we want to know if they are parallel or skew. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the vector that's created from each of them. So the vector, I guess we can give them a name. We'll call this one A. This vector will be the components that are multiplied by t. So this is 1t. There'd be a 0t here, and then there's a 2t here. So I've got the vector 1, 0, 2. And then on the second one here, I've got the vector 2, 2, 4. 
Now it doesn't take a lot of work to see that there's no way that this is a, these are these are the same vector number one, and there's no way to get from one vector to the other with multiplication by a factor, if nothing else because there's a zero here and there's a two here and I can't multiply zero by anything and get two. The other components I could actually do right. I can multiply one by two to get two, and I can multiply two by two to get four. But this value zero here in the middle to create a two doesn't work. I, I can't do it. So these are not parallel. Okay, so just. We're going to make that observation over here. So we're going to attempt to find out if they're skew or intersecting by actually creating, um, or looking to see if they intersect where they intersect. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually try and solve these components. So I've got <coughs> x that's equal to 4 plus t here. And my x is also equal to 2 plus 2s. Right? So if I solve this for t, so I'm going to come over here and I'm going to solve for t, then t is equal to the same 2s, and then it would be minus 2, because I've got the 4 that I'm going to subtract to the other side. My y value is 2, and it's supposed to equal, from on the left side, on the other equation, 2s. This tells me automatically that s has to be the number 1. So since s has to be 1, it has to be 1 here as well. So the t would actually be 2 times 1 minus 2, or 0. So this does, in fact, intersect. So this intersects when s equals 1 and t equals 0. But that's not really what we want to know. We want to know the point of intersection. That is the x, y, z coordinate triple, or ordered triple. So I've got the s value, I've got the t value. Either one I can use, and I'm going to plug it back into one of the sets of equations. I'm going to use t just because it's 0. It makes it a little bit cleaner over here. So I'm going to use the first uh, line. On. So over here, I'm going to take x equals 4. I'm going to get y equals 2, because I'm plugging in t for t is 0. And I'm going to get z equals 3. So the point of intersection is 4, 2, 3. They're not parallel, they do intersect. All right, now we talked about in the last few sections about this word orthogonal. Orthogonal, if we meant perpendicular. Well, in three dimensional space, uh, another word that we can talk about um, when we're relating a, a orthogonal vector to a plane instead of to a line is the word normal. So let's just take a look at this. It says a plane in space is determined by specifying a non zero vector that is normal to the plane i.e. it has to be orthogonal or perpendicular to every vector lying in the plane. And a point P1 um, lying in the plane. Its equation then can be written, so we need a normal vector, we need a point. Its equation can be written as 0 equals a1 times x minus x1, a2, y minus y2, and a3 times z minus z, z minus z1. Sorry, y1, not z1. Um, so we're going to use this then, and we're going to find the equation of a plane. So we've got a plane containing these three points, and we'll label them. We'll call this P, Q, and R. And what we're going to do is we're going to find the vectors P, Q. We're going to find the vector P, R. Because we need two vectors to create a normal, um, to, to create a vector that is normal or orthogonal to the vectors we're working with. So P, Q means taking the Q components minus the P components. So 2 minus 1 is 1. Negative 1 minus a negative 2 would be a positive 1. And then 0 minus 1 would be a negative 1. Now with PR, I've got the R values down here. So I've got 3 minus 1, which would be 2. I've got uh, negative 2 minus negative 2, which would be 0. And then I've got 2 minus 1, which is 1. So this is my second vector. And then again, in order to create a normal vector, that means an orthogonal vector, I need the cross product. So I need, oops, the cross product of P, Q, cross P, R. So this is I, J, K, 1, 1, negative 1, 2, 0, 1. So we're going to expand along the minors. So I've got um, 1, negative 1, 0, 1 times I minus 1, 2, negative 1, 1 times j, and then plus 1, 1, 2, 0 times k. 
So multiplying down, this gives me 1, and then subtracting out, this gives me 1j minus. So this is negative 1 down, minus a negative 2 up, so that's plus 2. So 1 plus 2, so this is 3, So th and then it's minus from the beginning, 3j. And then I have, multiplying down, I get 1, which isn't a particularly, I mean, sorry, 1 times 0, I get 0, minus the 2 times 1, which is going to be 2, so this is minus 2k. So this is my orthogonal vector, my normal vector. Um, I minus 3j minus 2k is normal to the plane. So this is my normal vector, which means the numbers in front, I'll put that number 1 back in actually, are going to give me the a1, a2, a3 back in that formula. So 1, negative 3, and negative 2. And we can use again the any point. So I'm going to write the equation above. So this is actually going to be the a value of 1 times x minus, and uh, we'll just use the first p value. That would be fine. x minus 1 minus 3 times y minus 2, so minus negative 2, which would be plus 2, and then minus 2 times z minus 1, and then that equals to 0. And of course, you could create that line written in a different way um, if you wanted to use one of the other points. All right, we're going to work a little bit with some sketching. Um, this one says to find the intercepts and sketch the given plane. The intercepts are very simple. To find it, and think about it in two dimensions. To find an x-intercept, you let y equal 0. To find a y-intercept, you let x equal 0. Well, the same thing happens here. If I want to find the x-intercept, I let the y and z be 0. So my x-intercept takes 2x minus 0 plus 4 times 0 equals 4. So I get 2x equals 4 or x equals 2. So my x-intercept is 2, 0, 0. We'll do the same thing for my y-intercept. So my y-intercept is going to be 2 times 0 minus y plus 4 times 0 equals 4. So I get negative y equals 4 or y equals negative 4. So this is 0, negative 4, 0 for my y-intercept. And then my z-intercept I'm going to let 2 times 0 minus 0 plus 4 times z equals 4. So I get 4z equals 4, or z equals 1. This is 0, 0, 1. All right, so the sketching part. We haven't really done much sketching in these uh, sections with three dimensions. We're going to sketch a little bit in this section. So just like when we did points and plotted points, we're going to draw that x, y, z plane. Z's on top, X is over here, and Y's over here. And we're going to plot the intercepts. That's what we're going to actually plot. So we're going to plot the X-intercept of 2. We have a Y-intercept of negative 4. That's trickier to plot, so let me draw that dotted line in like we had uh, once before. That's pretty good. Um, so we've got this y value of negative 4, so I'm going to go backwards, 1, 2, 3, 4. So approximately something like that. And then we have a z value of crossing at uh, 1. So what we're going to actually do is we're going to, to connect these, um, much like a triangle. I mean, it, it is a triangle, but I actually connected them like this. And I'm going to attempt to draw sort of a plane in here that it'd be... I don't know, uh, some kind of visual imagery of what's going on. So imagine now that you have this sheet of you know paper or something like this, and this sheet of paper contains that purple rectangle. And so I'm not sure that that red really helped anything. Maybe I'll just leave it blank. Um, but your book shades it in, um, but their pictures look, of course, way better than my hand drawings. But you imagine that that um, purple rectangle or purple triangle lying on the piece of paper, and the paper so then is tilted just like that purple triangle is tilted. So we're going to do our best to draw these, but this would be a version of what might work. All right, last question in this section we're going to look at: state whether the lines are parallel or perpendicular, and find the angle between the lines. Now, we've talked about this before, the parallel or perpendicular, but we haven't done the angle between the lines part. Now, um, we've had this kind of an equation, though, um, set up before uh, when we've looked at this, but we haven't had it with 
planes, you know, uh, plane lines. This is lines rather in a plane. Sorry, lines in three dimensions instead of lines instead of lines in a plane. So we need the vectors just like we needed on the first problem we did. So we're going to find the vectors first. So the vectors come from the coefficients of t. So this is negative three, four, one, and this vector over here would be two, negative two, one. And we need um, to find this formula. So the formula that I'm um, going to be using looks like this. Cosine of theta oops, equals v1 dot v2 over the magnitude of v1 times the magnitude of v2. Okay. So obviously I need several components. I need the dot product. And then I need the magnitude of v1 and the magnitude of v2. And we haven't seen this problem used since we did dot products. So this has been several sections. That was back in 11.2 when we saw this pro process used there. But we've, we're now using it with a little bit different context or starting point. So we're going to do v1 dot v2 first. So the dot product, if you'll remember, it's been a while, is simply multiplying component-wise and adding it up. So I have negative 3 times 2, that's negative 6, plus 4 times negative 2, that's negative 8. So I'm going to change it to minus 8 plus 1 times 1, which is 1. So this ends up being negative 14 plus 1, which is negative 13. I also need the um, magnitude of v1. So this would be the square root of 9 plus 16 plus 1, which is the square root of 26. And I need the magnitude of v2, which is the square root of 4 plus 4 plus 1, which is the square root of 9 or 3. So this formula right here, which at this point I think I need to move it up. Let me see here. Yeah, we'll just say it, we'll just set it right here. So we've got a little space to work on down here. So I need to find the angle measure. So I've got theta equal to the inverse cosine of V1 dot v2, that, that was negative 13, over the square root of the 26 times the 3. And you can put the 3 in front of the 26 if that helps you to think about it a little bit clearer. If we calculate that angle measurement, or that uh, value inside of my inverse cosine, and then do the inverse cosine to find the angle measurement, we find out that this is 2.59 radians.